So I've got some coffee and I've got some amps set up and I'm just about to start recording guitars for the album. So I'm using just an orange 1x12 cab. I'm going to use the Jet City for one of the guitars because I love the sound of this on the Overdrive channel. And I'm going to use the Orange Dark Terror for the second guitar so that they've got slightly different sounds. I'm using two mics, a Sontronics STC20 and a Shure SM57. And I'm now going to show you my pedal board that I'm going to use. So my pedal board, going into the front of the amp, I literally have the tuner and then straight into the Route 808 visual sound. And then in the effects loop, I've got the noise suppressor. And that is it. I'm going to be trying three different guitars to see which ones sound the best. So I'm going to be using the PRS S2 single cut, the VGA Excalibur Supra, and the Yamaha PAC 611 HFM. So with the Jet City amp, I think this guitar sounds the best. So this is going to be guitar one, and that will be the guitar going into the Jet City, and I'm going to lay down those tracks now. So it's day two of recording guitars. I've tried out various different guitars, and for guitar two, I'm going to use the old trusty Ibanez RG with EMG pickups in. Yeah, I'm using the Dark Terror, Orange Dark Terror, on the setting that I showed you yesterday. So let's begin.
So today we're in the studio, as you can see we're recording vocals. Here's Andy, the man. Mm -hmm. He is going to talk you through the album concept. Hey, um, I'm Andy. Uh, I've been working on this the last couple of months um, after Simon uh, told me of the concept. He took me to one side, he told me about this concept. Uh, it's about a witch. The name of the band is Kaitella. She's named. It's named after Alice Kaitella. An Irish woman who was accused of witchcraft, uh, various things. Uh, Wikipedia, her, she was accused of extremely abominable things. Um, our album uh, is about, not about her, but it's about a witch. It, she gets cast out of a town and she basically uh, loses her faith in religion as a whole because of the absolute cruelty of humanity and ends up basically getting revenge. Her revenge um, comes at an ultimate cost because it kills two people who are actually part of her family related to her sister and she ends up spending her life wandering through the world regretting what she's done. She ends up living um, with the absolute remorse and guilt. It's basically the, it's, it's about, re it's about um, revenge, uh, rejection and regret and guilt. It's, those are the core feelings of this person um, who is spurned by people who follow a different religion and it's the, the, the um, absolute um, conflict of religions and what that causes between people and the, uh, the conflicts, the unnecessary conflicts and that's basically where it comes from really so I don't think I can say anymore. <laughs> yeah so Andy has summed that up perfectly so mm -hmm. I initially had the the concept of a cur. I wanted a witch that was um, done wrong to, then she got her revenge by cursing and then she realised later on in life that that was wrong and she regretted it. So that was my original concept and then I handed it to Andy. Mm. I turned it from a very, very basic idea into something which is a lot more complex and mm -hmm. just better basically because my idea was pretty basic <laughs> yeah. uh, it, was, it was a good idea it was a good concept i knew i knew i knew because it it's, it's based on reality that that shit happens yeah right? yeah I mean, obviously the, the magical curses shit didn't happen yeah that didn't happen no I mean, it was like some phenomena may have occurred at yeah. a point of coincidence but <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah you know what i um what i wrote in the lyrics uh is a, is a lot more extreme yeah in terms of like people skinning themselves alive and fucking each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't have that idea. <laughs> First track is called Tongues as Daggers and it's the, the jeering and the spurning and the shunning that drives our character from her village. She's kind of a pagan, she's kind of a She's a she's a witch. She's a pagan, and she but it's it's kind of like the nature religion. It's the religion of nature, and obviously it's something a lot more obscure, a lot more occultic. Um, but because of the advancing crosses, which play a prominent part, the idea of swarms of crosses, she gets um, chased out, and it's the absolute shock and the rage of losing what was once hers, and her desire for revenge. Um, it's basically sums up tongues as daggers because it was it's it's this idea of like losing and, and obviously seeing everything that's wrong with the opposing religion you know seeing the arrogance of it the the hubris um, the, the, the the falsehood of it and the idea that it that that that's the true path when there really isn't a true path in real life. Uh, with with faith and unless you practice for the right reasons, which most people don't really do, um, so that there, so that's basically what that is. Um, do not pray is basically ultimately the, our character's descent into utter nihilism. It's this descent into uh, losing faith and realizing that religion is pointless ultimately. And realizing that life is ultimately pointless. This is like it's sort of a character's depression, and that's sort of uh, and that's sort of an anger, sort of a raging anger, sort of an inward an inward anger, a self hatred, um, and a sort of a, 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 a view of absurdity at the behavior of those who indulge uh, a faith, 
Um, obviously, I don't give a fuck if someone is uh, religious or not. If, the, if it gives, if they're, if they're happy, then well, fine, fuck them, whatever. Um, but yeah, the, um, it, it, it's it's her when she as she's on the verge of her revenge. She, she's as she's on the verge of basically destroying the the people, the the town, the community that shunned her unjustly because of an ex because of a difference of opinion ultimately that's what it is um, and she basically promises vengeance upon them and uh, yeah I am calamity is the vengeance um, she basically watches them kill each other she prays she um, she she casts spells upon the town and the spells work it causes everyone to go insane they skin each other alive, they um, skin each other alive and uh, fuck each other fleshless and s uh, sear wounds with salt and and it gets more and more and more dark and fucked up. Um, and they, On they a lighter note, the coffee's arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, basically, um, once they're all dead, because this goes on for several days, she watches them sleepless for several days, so she watches as the days pass on, she watches them kill each other until there's nobody left. Um, and it's this sort of like, uh, this kind of glee, like this, this ruthless glee um, that she's feeling, I, just, I finally got what I wanted. And... Track four, Ancestral Passenger, is when she discusses her own personal faith, which is like a pagan faith. It's a faith, um, it's a faith, it's a nature religion, it's a the nature of the earth, obviously it's a lot more complex, it also in, it's a, but her religion was not just was of a pagan uh, learning, it was also occultic, it was obviously magical, so it was a magica. So, on reflection, maybe not necessarily pagan, but a magica, you know like Crowley or someone like that, you know, where these actually, these, these kind of things actually work, this sorcery, basically, as it were, it is, ultimately it is sorcery, and it turns out to be, it actually is real, and she genuinely was um, a, a sorceress. Um, but she's talking about how she lost her faith, and um, she got her revenge with her faith, but now she still doesn't believe in anything. Um, and that's, that's, that's that one. Um, a seething relic is basically her basking in the glow of of the aftermath of the of the catastrophe that she has caused as she basically wanders and lingers through it just as living just smelling the pain and the death that she's caused the absolute misery the absolute penury and the and the and the plight and the hell that she's brought upon these people who are now dead in the earth um, she basically suddenly, without suddenly realizing it, she comes down. She she basically sees like someone from her past who's actually her family. That's her sister, right? Uh, holding two of her nieces, her own daughters, who she who she's actually like like killed, mutilated, and killed, who are, who are, who are dying in her arms. Um, to spare them the pain of whatever like horror was going to come across, whatever plague, whatever plague was going to come upon them. So she suddenly sees this moment, and it's basically like her sister's last moment of revenge, and that tells you something about their history, about the idea of that tells you something about their history, about the about maybe this character did something in the past. Her sister can't forgive her, and this is her sister's last moment of revenge because her sister was there the whole time and knew the whole time and actually engineered the entire thing, and um, ultimately gets the gets the win in the end. She's the one who wins out in the end. Uh, sadly, our main character, who you're supposed to sympathise with, ends up the um, the villain of the piece. Um, it's strange how, in a way, the characters you're supposed to sympathise with in certain films and certain TV shows who you're, who you're supposed to think oh yeah he's justified and everything he ends up becoming unjust and that's what I wanted with that one uh, The Veil and Furls is basically the resignation of misery and guilt um, the moment um, of, of realisation uh, so you got that one 
So there's, there's not really much to say about that one. It's generally just about the resignation of guilt, the realization, the the horror, the the shame. You know, that's that's really all I can say about that one. There's not an awful lot to say. Uh, Two Fawns, track seven, um, is the reflection of the, 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 the memory of those two nieces. It's the whole kind of thing of, and it, it, it's all like the idea of being a, someone who's accidentally killed someone that they didn't deserve to, that didn't deserve to die, uh, especially if it's a family member or someone who, uh, and it's, it's, it's living with that. It's, it's, it's a following on of the guilt, of, of, the, of, the, of the shame. The remorse, the the remorse, the remorse that will not earn them any sympathy. That will just earn them nothing more but spite. They can't be forgiven, and that's what Two Fawns is. Two Fawns is those two nieces. That's what they are. And the last track is called A Shadow Disintegrating Among Maggots, and that's basically the paralysis of depression, the numbing paralysis of depression. Um, the, of that, where it leads you ultimately because you will never be forgiven for something so abominable it ultimately becomes that and that's basically what that is that is basically um, the moment of sitting somewhere beyond everything uh, no longer a part of the world no longer a part of humanity just a, just a, just a husk ultimately uh, disintegrating um, and that's basically what a shadow amongst maggots is so that's the album, that's basically uh, Kaitella, that's the album, that's the concept. It's basically a woman who was rejected, she gets revenge, she uh, she realises that her revenge went too far and she ultimately spends her life ashamed, regretful, remorseful and um, unforgiven and disintegrating basically worse than fucking... What's her name? What's her name from Great Expectations? Oh, um, well, the lady. Yeah, the one with the bride. Um, the bride. Yeah, Mrs. Havisham. Mrs. Havisham. Mrs. Havisham. Yeah, basically, like, disintegrating into Lock nothing like Mrs. Havisham. Or a hobnob and a cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Except it actually physically aches for yeah. ten, a thousand times worse. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically what that is. That's the concept. So, um, that's the Cotella, and I hope you enjoy it. Watch, watch, watch!